he couldn't fight the feeling Something about it, he knew he couldn't doubt it Just the first kick flip, he landed uh, Labeled a misfit, a bandit cocoon, cocoon, cocoon. His neighbors couldn't stand his soul He was banished to the park Started in the morning, one stopped after dark Yeah, when they said it's getting late in here So I'm sorry young man, there's no skating here And so we kick, push, kick, push, kick, push, kick, push, coast And away he rolled, just a rebel to the world with no place to go And so we kick, push, kick, push, kick, push, kick, push, coast so come escape with me, just a rebel looking for a place to be. So let's kick and push. Right, here we are with the greatest UFC fighter, the greatest UFC fighter, Frank Shamrock. Okay, if you really are into UFC fighting, you into any of those those realistic fighting things, this is the great one right here. This is the one that you need to go home, go to Blockbusters. Go to Hollywood, go to any video store around in your area. If you see a DVD and it ain't got him on it, it's not real UFC fight. This is the best. How you doing, sir? I'm doing good. <laughs> All right, our interview is going to start off with how is it that when you're preparing for a UFC fight, how does, what type of music do you listen to to get yourself in the zone and prepared and on gear for what you get ready to do? Uh, I listen to quite a bit of music, but uh, I like the uh, pretty gnarly uh, Pretty uh, hard beating rap and hip hop when I go uh, to train. For my uh, cardiovascular training, I like uh, I like a fast with a good beat, and then uh, for my sparring and stuff, I like it a little bit slower but with a good beat. Because I punch and move uh, at the beat of the music, so uh, for me it's very rhythmic and it's very uh, it's very natural when the beat comes on the move. Yes, it's like you do dance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just think it helps me uh, relax and focus better. Because what, what the music does is it allows my, uh, you know, subconscious mind to kind of chill. Uh, and it allows my subconscious mind to sort of take more control of what's going on by way of my body. Because I just hear the music and then the music moves, you know, or helps me move or helps me guide myself. But each round, if the song changes, then so does the tempo and so does the beat at which I'm moving my, my body. Sir, sir. Okay, and I want to get in here with the both of these two great ones, but this is the man. Now, now let me ask you something. You know, when the UFC first came in, man, I mean, and no disrespect to nobody, they was down there. But this man, he done came in, and he didn't just change the sport. I mean, what is it that you did to, like, revolutionize your fighting to take it a step above everybody else? I mean, when, ju when jiu-jitsu was, like, in everybody's mind, the dominant thing, man, you came in here. Frankie, you just like, remember when we was in that class, you showed me that, that, that whole, yeah. <laughs> the terrible thing, man. Yeah. yeah, what is it that you done did, man, it just changed, I mean, the, your last fight, I mean, you just dominated the guy, man. Talk to us, what, what, I mean, what is it, how do you, what did you do to change your I mean, mind? I didn't, I didn't do anything different, I just looked at it different. You know, everybody came at it, and when I started, uh, as a martial artist, and everybody was relying on their martial arts, uh, on their current martial arts system to make them successful. And then all I did was when I came aboard, uh, I had a different outlook at it. I looked at it like, like a scientific application, like I was going to school. Uh, and I applied my, you know, what kind of martial arts approach to it. Uh, with a scientific base. So, uh, you know, I've always been a fan of Bruce Lee, and he's always, you know, uh, preached a way of uh, no waste in motion economy. Uh, so I just took those same principles to fighting, and I, when I first started, I realized that everybody didn't know what the hell they were doing. They were just, you know, fighting and doing their best. Uh, but there were very few scientists that came along and studied the art and created, this, you know, regular biomechanical systems to, to do the art. Uh, so I look at myself more as a scientist and as a teacher than as a real fighter. Uh, but, you know, if you sat down for 10 years like I did and studied it, you'd figure it out too. Yes, sir. No yes, one sir. else took the time because everybody else is, you know, running around doing this, that, and the other. But, so. and, and just one other question. I mean, because right now on the underground market with hip-hop, with, with the fight game, most of the people that, that watch pay-per-view, there's a lot of those teenagers out there selling drugs, they're running wild. There's a lot of other people. But if you go to the underground market, they got these underground tapes where kids out in the back alleys trying to do that. If you could say anything that's positive to a kid out there trying to trying to emulate this stuff and, and cause causing badly harm to a family member or a friend, what could you say to them to, to 
to just change that because people, some people are really seriously been hurt. And on the underground market, do you know what? These tapes are the hottest yep. selling tapes out there. Well, I mean, you know, the, the, the scary thing is, or the disconcerting thing is that, um, you know, fighting in itself is, is against human nature. It's fight or flight, and humans will usually run if they're smart. Um, when you stay and fight, there's a whole other responsibility associated with it. For me, it's an art form. So I would never do it anywhere else. I would never do it unless they were paying me gobs of money and I was doing it professionally. It just doesn't make any sense. Or unless I was in my gym in a safe, controlled environment. I mean, if you're out and you're young and you want to get into business or you like what you're doing or whatever, you need to approach it like art and you need to find a good teacher or leader or somebody to help guide you through it. There's a bunch of knuckleheads out there doing a bunch of crazy stuff. This, you know, it's the same as in pro wrestling. It's the same as in football. If you're not wearing pads, you don't have a good instructor. You don't know what you're doing. You're going to hurt yourself or somebody else. But it really is an art form, and that's what we got to teach our youth these days. Just like hip hop is art. I mean, it's art when it's done right. It's beautiful. When it's done wrong, I mean, you know, it sucks. That's the thing we got to avoid. So everybody out there, remember this: is the great one, Mr. Frank Shamrock. Remember, he's one of the most humblest guys you can ever meet. All right. <laughs> Much love, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Frank. Yeah, see, see the peace sign? He's straight from there. <laughs> Thank you.